Well, thank you, Mark, and thank you all for coming to the Center for Immigration Studies discussion of our new report on uh, STEM workers. Uh, the report is available if you don't have it. Uh, it will be online, as Mark said, at cis.org. Now, the idea that we need to allow in more STEM workers, that is science, technology, engineering, and math, people with those kinds of degrees, has become a kind of article of faith among many elites in American business and politics. In the new report we are releasing today, my colleague Karen Ziegler and I analyzed the latest government data and find, and find really what most other researchers have found. Uh, the country has well more than twice as many people uh, or workers with STEM degrees as there are actual STEM jobs. Uh, also consistent with other research, we find only modest levels of wage growth for such workers for more than a decade. Both the employment and wage data indicate that such workers are not in short supply. Now, we're certainly not alone in coming to this conclusion. Reports by the Economic Policy Institute, or EPI, uh, the RAND Corporation, the Urban Institute, and the National Research Council have all found no evidence that STEM workers are in short supply. Um, after looking uh, at the evidence from the EPI report, PBS, which is not uh, often does not say much critical about immigration, even entitled the story on the EPI report, The Bogus Tech Worker Shortage, How Guest Workers Lower U.S. Wages. Now, Rand's analysis was interesting because it wasn't just looking at what was going on at the time of the study. Theirs was backward looking. And Rand concluded, despite recurring concerns about a potential shortage of STEM personnel, we find, this is Rand's words, we find no evidence that such shortages have existed at least since 1990, nor that they are on the horizon. When Karen and I looked at the latest data from the Census Bureau, uh, we found the following. In 2012, there were more than twice as many people, as I said, with STEM degrees than there are STEM jobs. There are about 5.3 million uh, STEM jobs in the United States, or people working in a STEM job, and over 12 million people with a STEM degree. Only one-third of native-born people, or U.S.-born, if you like that term better, who have a STEM degree actually have a STEM job of any kind. There are 1.5 million U.S.-born uh, people with an engineering degree not working as engineers, as well as uh, half a million with technology degrees not working in their field, 400,000 with math degrees working outside their field, and 2.6 million with science degrees working outside of STEM as well. In addition, there are 1.2 million native-born people with STEM degrees who aren't working. They're either unemployed or entirely out of the labor market. Now, it is true that unemployment, that is the share of people who have a STEM degree and say they're looking for a job actively, they don't have one and looking, is low, but it's low for all people with college degrees. There's nothing particularly unusual. It does seem that one thing is people with college degrees don't like to admit that they're unemployed or say that they're unemployed in the government data. Um, and this is true regardless of your degree, and it's certainly true that unemployment per se is not high among STEM workers. Now, turning to immigrants, it is also the case that less than half of immigrants with a STEM degree actually have a STEM job. In particular, I find this interesting, just 23% of all engineers with engineer, uh, immigrants with engineering degrees actually work as engineers. Of the 700,000 immigrant STEM workers the data show entered between 2007 and 2012, only one-third, very similar to that figure for natives overall, actually got a STEM job. About one-third got a job outside of STEM, and actually about one-third aren't working at all. The fact that so many recent immigrants with STEM degrees did not find STEM jobs is a clear indication that certainly immigration is a very inefficient tool for adding to the STEM workforce. Most immigrants that we allow in, at least in the recent past, with STEM degrees are not becoming STEM workers. Now, one other point about the supply of STEM workers that sometimes gets missed is that of all the people holding a STEM job in the United States, 31% report they don't have a STEM degree, which reminds us of something. Um, it, there's about, there's about 1.6 million of them, that the f STEM workforce is much more flexible than sometimes supposed. Some people who don't get a STEM degree can often do STEM work. This is especially true in technology and computer fields, but it's also true often in science and lesser extent 
in math and engineering. But in all those places, there are people who didn't get a degree in that area who do that work, and there are people who have no STEM degree who do that work. Now, as I say, it's true that unemployment is not high. However, there are a large number of STEM degree holders entirely out of the labor market, about 1.3 million total immigrant and natives. You can see almost all of these figures just shown in table one. Um, but what I think is enor what is important about the no enormous number of people, immigrant and native, who are not working in STEM jobs is that this is a huge supply of people who are already here and already trained who employers could draw upon. I mean, another way to think about the STEM worker shortage, of course, in addition to all these people who are STEM trained but not STEM workers, is wages. Wages are one of the best measures of labor demand. If STEM workers are in short supply, as you would learn on the first day of economics, wages should be increasing rapidly as employers try desperately to uh, to offer compensation in an effort to retain the workers they have or to find workers in a limited supply. That's what should be happening. But wage data from multiple sources show little wage growth or very modest wage growth over the last 12 years. In our report, we estimated that wages for STEM workers overall, hourly wages, so that controls for how many hours a week you work, uh, increased on average for the last 12 years about 0.7% or less than 1%. And for annual wages, they grew by about 0.4%. Uh, so that's less than one half of 1% on average a year. I should point out that wage growth is very modest for almost every subcategory of STEM workers, even when we drill down in and look at specific types of engineers or specific types of people who work with computers. Um, you can see all of that in figure seven and eight, or the general trends. And then if you really want to immerse yourself in the data, you can look at figures A7 and A8, um, beginning on page 32 of the appendix at the end of the report. Now, you might wonder, and I wondered this too, Karen and I did, you know, is this kind of data really able to find wage growth? Maybe there's just, you know, people just sort of say the same thing year after year in the survey or something. Maybe there's some reason why. Now, at the bottom of page A8, we show that there is a clear exception to these trends of generally flat wage growth. And can anyone think of what type of STEM worker has not experienced flat wage growth? Not by my petroleum, petroleum engineers. Their wages grew 10 times faster than all other STEM workers for the obvious reason that the fracking boom has created an enormous demand. And when you have demand, driven uh, wage increases, it does show up in the data. And that's one of the two things I think that tells us. The data is able to capture wage growth even among a modest number of people. Um, and it is also the case that it shows something else that we may find shocking, but that the market actually worked. You got wage growth when you had massive increases in demand. That has been lacking generally, or it's not the case that the supply is somehow being outstripped by demand. And so you don't have that with STEM generally, but you certainly have it with petroleum engineers. Their wages are up like $50,000 adjusted for inflation in the last 12 years. So, so if there really is this superabundance of native and immigrant STEM workers already here, little wage growth, and STEM immigration actually already exceeds the absorption capacity of STEM labor, why are there continual calls to allow in more STEM workers? Well, I think the answer, I don't want to put it too simply, is two things, greed and politics. Nothing that should surprise us here in this city. The businesses that want more immigration would like to get more workers to choose from, holding wages in check and increasing their bargaining power over employees. From their point of view, what's not to like? The Republicans, who generally listen to their corporate donors in Silicon Valley and elsewhere, it's not just Silicon Valley, and they respond by promising to increase STEM immigration even further. The motives of the Democrats are a little more complicated. They like the corporate donations as well, but even better, they see increasing STEM immigration as essentially a bargaining chip to get what they really want from Republicans, which is an amnesty, a legalization for illegal immigrants. Democratic Representative Luis Gutierrez has basically said as much, and that's essentially the way they see it. We'll give the Republicans, we'll get their STEM and the corporate donations that they like, and we'll get our legalization. That's the trade-off. 
But in addition to this kind of collusion, if you will, between the two parties to push for more STEM, there are other reasons why the STEM worker shortage is given credence, despite all this evidence, not just from us, but from others, to the contrary. And I think one of the reasons, and Lindsay's an expert in this area or knows a great deal about it, so if you have a lot more questions, you might want to ask him, but one of the reasons is the generally poor performance of American school students in science and math relative to other first world countries. These test scores, which constantly get reported on, create the perception that we are not producing enough scientists and engineers. Now, low relative average test scores are certainly troubling. But as the EPI study, and Lindsay was one of the authors of that study mentioned above, makes clear, um, this does not prevent us from producing a large number of high quality STEM students. America is a huge country, and the STEM workforce is relatively small. For example, it only grew by a million people in the last 12 years. This is well less than 5% of the 20 million students or more than 20 million students who actually got a bachelor's degree in the last 12 years. And that's not counting the millions more who got graduate degrees. Producing a small number of high quality STEM workers out of this enormous population isn't very hard. And I've already said most Americans who get the STEM degrees actually don't even get the STEM jobs. We're actually producing too many out of that large population. Now, another reason for the why we need more STEM work argument is taken seriously is that it is endorsed by many of Americans, most America, many of America's most prominent billionaires, uh, entrepreneurs, such as Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. Um, they're seen as very smart, so what they want must be good for the country. What's funny about that is their vested interest in holding down wages and improving their bargaining power vis-a-vis -vis their workers that comes from increasing STEM often goes unmentioned. And unfortunately, too many in the media just simply transcribe their press releases. <clears throat> it would probably be the case to say that when hedge fund managers argue that their income should be taxed at the lower capital gains rate rather than the income tax rate, stories about their lobbying efforts include their vested interest, how much money this would save them. But it is a, a, an odd fact, or maybe not so odd, that often stories about political pressure to increase STEM imp, uh, immigration doesn't include the, vest, the discussion of the vested interests of the employers who are paying for that lobbying. Now, despite this bandwagon, um, let, me, let me talk about what I think are some potential problems with allowing ever more foreign STEM workers into the country. Again, the number is already very large, but let's talk about what might be a problem. First, the argument itself for doing so is disingenuous at best and dishonest at worst, and it's never a good idea to base public policy on a deception of the public. Second, there are still, these are still mostly middle class jobs, and in a large number of American students getting STEM degrees are not finding the STEM jobs for which they trained. Um, over, this, uh, over the last few years, in fact, um, this fact over the last few years, coupled with the lack of wage growth, can only over time deter American kids in the future from going into these fields and getting these middle class jobs. Another reason is, another concern I have is that uh, STEM workers are vital to, the na to national security. And having a large share of our STEM workforce, foreign born, does have important national security implications to think about. Um, fourth, allowing American industry to become dependent on foreign sources of skilled labor means industry, quite frankly, just becomes increasingly indifferent to any problems that exist in our schools, making it less likely that these problems will ever be fixed. In other words, it, businesses are one of the most important lobbying or political entities in the United States. That's true at the state level, it's true at the local level, it's true at the national level. If you say, if they say, well, you know, yeah, maybe we're not teaching enough math and science, but that doesn't affect me because I get my labor from overseas, it seems much less likely that they're going to take any new, the kind of interest they would in American schools than if we say, look, you've got to rely on a basically U.S. workforce. And so I think that's a potential kind of long-term problem to make American business more indifferent to what's going on in American schools. Let me just say, in conclusion, 
look, there may be specific geographic areas or a highly tech technical specialized field in which demand really is outstripping supply. However, it makes little sense to allow broad public policy to be driven by these very narrow interests. If there is some special need in a highly technical field, then perhaps a narrowly focused immigration program is called for. But overall, the data indicates that the supply of STEM workers vastly exceeds the number of STEM jobs, and there has been only modest wage growth in these professions, a clear indication that the supply of workers is not be, uh, outstripping demand, or the supply of demand is not outstripping supply. And in my view, um, these facts are what should inform and shape immigration policy uh, moving forward. Thank you.